if we fast forward to 2008, which I think is his peak, and this period, 2006 to 2010, pretty clearly his best years for me. You could throw in 2003 as well. But we go to 2008. They're a much better team. They are now, instead of a plus two offense, they're a plus six offense, but they're a better defensive team as well. They're really, really good that year. And Kobe's uh, box plus minus in that season is his career best in my model, right around plus six. And that plus six is better than Wade or Harden ever hit in the regular season or the playoffs. Uh, 2008, I thought he played better defense, shot 36% from downtown, created about nine shots per 100 for teammates, passer rating was better. So the totality of that body of work and the idea that he was a better off-ball player, he was a better off-ball player than both of these guys to me, Harden and Wade, because he was very active without the ball, though. He moved. Wade is a great cutter and an explosive cutter. But Kobe moved in different directions, in different places. I'm going to come off a screen. I'm going to back cut you. Constant kind of movement without the basketball in a way that threatened and pressured defenses. It picked up some gravity as part of his off-ball game. So you do have to worry about him. He does have some shooting and spacing that are beneficial and additive. And he can move without the ball and cut and get to places that fit within his offense. Part of that is because when he catches it, he's dangerous in so many areas. This is the, this is the, the perk of having a back to the basket game. So when you cut into space at the elbow, he can catch and turn in one motion and hit that shot. We saw him hit that shot over and over and over again during those years. Doesn't even really have to be square. It just gets into it. Wade is not a guy who's going to come off a pin down screen curl up at the elbow and make that shot constantly and James Harden certainly isn't doing that but wait but Kobe can also get in a position where he gets a seal in a post he can catch with his back to the basket at eight feet and hit that he did this a lot he's a very impressive and underrated off-ball player and I think that's a big factor in comparing him especially to these two guys therefore What I'm about to tell you should not come as a surprise. In the playoffs, when we get to the postseason, when we get to trying to create championship-level offense and team heights against high-quality and championship-level defense, what happened to Kobe Bryant? You could say he got better. Check this out. 2008 to 2010, shot creation goes up to 10 per 100. The scoring... His scoring over those three years was 31 points per 75 plus 4% efficiency. He actually hit plus 5% efficiency in a smaller stretch from 2006 to 2008. Remember, 2006 to 2008, they play whatever, 30-something playoff games. But 2008 to 2010, it's like 60 playoff games. So 31 plus 4, 30 plus 5. That is similar to Wade's 30 plus 6. And for my money, just a a level, not an enormous jump, but it is a level ahead of Harden's 31 plus 2. So all that stuff we talked about earlier with changes in the playoffs, counters, it goes the other way with Kobe. Kobe is a guy I've described as inelastic or resilient. His robust scoring game allows him to have counter after counter after counter. Yes, he took too many long twos, which prevented his efficiency from ever seeing plus 8, plus 10, plus plus 12, you know, the all-time greats. But that level below, all these other things that we've discussed, allow him to succeed in general against so many different kinds of defenses as a scorer. His numbers, some more advanced numbers, box plus minus of over plus six. So right in this Wade, Harden, Kobe, their playoff box plus minuses are very similar. He has the highest augmented plus minus, just under plus five from 2008 to 2010 in the playoffs. This is the one that kind of impresses me the most. His postseason offenses during that period were about plus seven. 
So we haven't talked about any of the other players in this series playing on a team of that height. Uh, when he played with Shaq, these were some of the greatest postseason offenses in NBA history, up near plus, to- plus 9 and plus 10 over three-year stretches at the beginning of the decade. I-, I think a lot of that comes from what I just described, his ability to play without the basketball, his ability to still be a high-level creator, an offensive engine, and a good passer. Uh, he has outside shooting, and then the counters. He's got more counters and more robustness to his scoring game and his offensive game than any of these guys. Now, of course, if you're not intimately familiar with my work, you might be screaming at the radio right now, like, wait a second, the teammates, what about the teammates? Of course the teammates matter. We're not, I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form that a single player is responsible for his team's long-term postseason offense or defense. It's not the point at all. It's just to say that the evidence is there that the nature of Kobe's game has proven to fit and scale up to very high-level teams, and I think we can see that in his style. I think we can understand why that's happening. You know, Pau Gasol and him were excellent fits. I think the triangle was actually a good fit for him because it allowed some of that off-ball activity to take shape, even if he went freelance from time to time. So you end up with him playing on better playoff teams, better playoff offenses than these other two guys ever had a chance to play on. Again, please don't look at the outcome of a team and say, you know, Kobe's team was plus eight and then this guy's plus seven. And so that's how you rank the players. That's not what I'm saying at all. Just looking at the evidence, the the things that actually happened that we know um, where Kobe did very well on high level teams as a lead guy or fitting in next to other options. In the case with Shaq, Shaq was more of the lead guy. And in the case with Gasol and Odom, uh, Kobe was more of the lead guy. And still, in both cases, very, very impressive results, not only on the team level, but on the individual numbers for Kobe. Thanks for listening. You can find the full episode of this Thinking Basketball podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you enjoy podcasts.